Hey, welcome back. We are in Exodus chapter 4, verses 14 to 17. Moses and God are having a conversation, and God is kind of volunteering Moses to go, and Moses says, uh, I'm, I'm unvolunteering out of this. So let's see how it goes at this point, starting in verse 14. Then the anger of the Lord burned against Moses, and he said, Is there not your brother Aaron the Levite? I know that he speaks fluently, and moreover, behold, he is coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You are to speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I, even I, will be with your mouth and his mouth, and I will teach you what you are to do. Moreover, he shall speak for you to the people, and he will be as a mouth for you, and you will be as God to him. You shall take in your hand this staff with which you shall perform the signs. Now, God has chosen Moses, and no doubt the, the Moses' life as an infant was saved because of a special divine intervention. So, kind of, you know, Moses owes God in, in a thousand ways, but this is one that's very concrete right here in the book. That's something to keep in mind. Moses wouldn't have even uh, gotten this far at all uh, had not God specially intervened and preserved his life. So, there's something for Moses to give some thought to. There was a national death decree against all Hebrew males, and yeah, God divinely intervened. So, uh, so this day could come when God is calling Moses to carry on and do this deliverance thing. So now God has volunteered Moses to this task, and Moses is kind of busy here uh, unvolunteering himself. But God insists. Now Moses' resistance has been tolerated up to this point, but here we come to a very interesting spot in the Bible because now it says God is actively angry against Moses. Now this is a very unusual thing. It only happens in Scripture a very few times. It certainly didn't happen in Genesis. But where God is actually, literally, particularly anger, angry with a particular individual, this is, this is rare, very rare. Sometimes he's angry at a group, uh, but angry at an individual, this is, this is pretty unique, only a few times. And so Moses gets to be the guy, yeah, the first guy in Scripture that God is distinctly angry with. So now as a concession to Moses, God, who really, you know, doesn't need to be making any concessions, but God makes a concession God says, look, your brother Aaron, I know that he speaks pretty well, and he's going to come and meet you, and you guys are going to team up and do this together. So God is providing for Moses, and Moses has kind of said, pled that, I, I need it, I need I don't speak well. God's providing him Aaron to be his helper here. Aaron's going to be Moses' spokesperson. Now, this passage contains the fundamental model of God to prophet to people uh, communication, and that's probably the most important thing to look at in just this passage. So God communicates his truth into the mind of the prophet. The prophet then speaks God's truth. He serves or functions as though he is God's mouth. He speaks God's words to the people, and then the people are faced with what to do. And so that's the model, you know, God to the prophet, the prophet to the people, and many times the kings and stuff, you know, a prophet will speak and, and the, the king will make the wrong decision. But that doesn't, it's not really the prophet's issue. I mean, God does not get unhappy with the prophet because the people made a wrong decision. The business of the prophet is to faithfully speak God's word to the people. So here's this model, the fundamental model of biblical prophetic speaking. God is speaking to the Bible writer or the prophet the Bible writer or the prophet is speaking onward to the people. So you and I, consequently, then God speaks to us, and God put the thoughts into the mind of the prophet, and the prophet spoke it, and we received it. What do we do with it? Well, did we receive it or do we not receive it? So this is the fundamental model, and it's very important right here. This is how prophecy and prophets work. A prophet is God's agent. God's, he's effectively acting as God's mouth. And so the, the best thing to do when a prophet speaks, we got to make sure it's a true prophet. But once we know we're, we're dealing with an actual prophet of the Lord God, the, the, what we need to do is always say, yes, sir. <laughs> we need to always say yes and go along with what God has. Because what God has is always better than anything you or I have. We can be sure of that. So God's word is fundamentally worthy. It's fundamentally powerful and good for us. God wants our best. 
uh, best outcomes for us that we should pay close attention to his word. And I hope you'll do that with me also as you come back tomorrow morning and we look at this some more. God bless.